Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to this presentation. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, cropping system study. And first of all, I'd like to thank my collaborators. They are from Agriculture for Canada, universities, as well as uh, private agriculture industry. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the contributions from uh, the technical support team. This is a big project. They did a wonderful job on this. The funding from this project from uh, multiple grower organizations, uh, South Kachiman government, as well as Agriculture for Canada through the CAP program. No, we know that agriculture is facing great challenges in such as food insecurity. So for producers, there are most concerns about the economic returns and the stability. And you know, on the Canadian prairies, the, the farm size is pretty big. And uh, the modernized agricultural practices normally reduce the crop species diversity, cause the concerns of our resilience of cropping systems. And uh, as well, we know agriculture is a big contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. There are no doubt that climate change affect the cropping system's performance. So how to address these questions, these challenges, and one way is to optimize the current cropping systems. So cropping system is a intensively managed agro ecosystem like other uh, ecosystems and the cropping system provide ecosystem services such as the yield, uh, the yield, yield, nutrients, uh, cycling, pest control, and others. So uh, the values of these good services provided by cropping system is much, it largely depends on the interaction between the cropping systems and the surrounding environment. So because there's a complexity and we need to use a multiple system indicators to, um, to assess the cropping systems, Unfortunately, there is a lack of uh, knowledge in terms of uh, assessing cropping system use a system approach. So for producers, it's uh, very important to adopt a well-planned uh, crop rotation because crop rotation is an uh, effective tool to manage your weeds, disease, or improve soil health. Uh, if you have a diversified crop rotation, that means you probably have a better outcome. For producers, uh, diversifying crop rotation is not just select different crops, but also need to consider the difference in uh, the phenotypical difference in crops, and uh, such as the root depth of biomass production. And another thing that's very important is uh, producers need to consider to set a clear goal of their crop rotation. It's for weight control, for economic returns, or long-term sustainability. So other consideration of uh, diversifying crop rotation is uh, they may need additional machinery uh, investment, as well as uh, considering the availability of uh, registered uh, uh, chemicals, as well as the residual effects. So when we talk about cropping system or crop rotation, keep in mind that cropping system it's dynamic, keep changing, and it could change dramatically if the new practices or new crops become available. Become available. For example, uh, currently the wheat cannot have the dominant cropping systems, but before that, the wheat monoculture or wheat fallow is a dominant cropping for a long term of a long time. When the canola or pods become a major players and producers try to go canola intensified or pulse intensified rotation uh, because you have a large uh, economic benefits. However, intensified the crops could cause a uh, disease problem. So more and more research point, uh, point the way that we need to go to diversified crop rotation for long-term sustainability. So when producer design or plan their crop rotation, uh, they have uh, uh, the different objectives. We consider the objectives and design projects will go to develop productive, productive and resilient cropping systems in different eco zones on the Canadian prairies. Uh, we use a system approach because we develop, we measure a whole bunch of uh, variables 
And today I will talk about the crop yield. There's three other presentations that will talk about uh, measuring user efficiency, carbon footprint, as well as uh, system resilience. Uh, my presentation hopefully to serve as an introduction for zero talks. Most important, we will assess uh, the G by E by M at the carbon system level as a part of uh, the system approach. So we, this experiment was established in 2018 at seven sites. You see this uh, three in Alberta, three in Saskatchewan, one in uh, Manitoba. So these seven sites are in different eco zones. So they provide a good opportunity to assess uh, the G by E by M through multiple years and multiple sites and also assess the resilience of carbon system. So we have uh, six um, rotations. Rotation one is a control, is a weight-based rotation. Uh, the second one is a uh, intensified rotation. If we are in the northern part of Prairie, for example, Merford, that will be canola intensified rotation. If we are in the south part of the Prairie, for, such as Let's Bridge or Three Currents, that will be post crop intensified rotation. Rotation three is a diversified rotation focused on crop diversification. We have four different crops in four year rotation. Rotation four is a market driven system. So crop selection in this rotation is solely based on the marketing price with a focus on economic returns. Rotation five is a high risk and potentially high rewarding systems. Um, we focus on introducing new crops such as soybeans in Manitoba, or in uh, Saskatchewan and Alberta. Rotation six is um, a soil health focused uh, rotation. Uh, we use uh, green manure or intercrop to uh, improve soil health. And this study uh, is a fully phased study, which means all crop in rotations will be growing in any single year. So that means every crop will be exposed to same weather conditions. So that allow us to assess the G by E by M and also to assess the resilience. Another thing for this uh, uh, study is that at each site, the crop best fit local conditions will be selected. That means uh, these results come out from this project will be highly related to local conditions so the producers can be easily adopt the results. So here's the results. Uh, look at this. The last one, the green one, is uh, soil health intensified rotation. They have lowest yield. It's kind of expected because we have a green manure in that rotation. Green manure phase has zero yield. And also we see this gray bar is a uh, MCS, a market driven cropping system, has high yield, and followed by the oil seeds or post crop intensified rotation, and then the diversified rotation. This diversified rotation is a green one in the middle. It's lower than the control, but right now we shouldn't jump to the conclusion that the diversified rotation is not good. Why? Because it's just a first four year study, and then basically it's a transition period and uh, the real benefits or drawback of cropping system hasn't shown up yet in the first four years. We need a longer term study to assess the real cropping system effects. Um, we just submitted uh, a proposal to renew the build on this project for another uh, five years. If funded, we will assess uh, the real cropping system effects. Uh, today I'll talk more about uh, uh, this Post crop intensified or diversified rotation. So my group recently did a literature review on how post crop affects the following crops yield, uh, resource use efficiency, and the soil carbon. So this is a snapshot. You see clearly that post crop has a positive effect on the following wheat and canola, and different post crop have different effects. Um, so this showing pause crop has effect on the following crop and also we should know that pause crop is affected by the preceding crop too. So here's the example. Um, the nitrogen fixation of, uh, of the P was higher following cereal compared following uh, canola. 
as well the large uh, variation among years. So this uh, rotation effect suggests that when we do research, we should consider uh, to use a system approach, approach, not just consider one single crop phase. So we know nitrogen is important for a crop, but also caused uh, environmental problems such as greenhouse gas emission. So we, if you grow pulse in the cereal crops, you reduce N2 emissions significantly. If you increase the frequency of pulses, that will further reduce the greenhouse gas emission. However, when you increase the intensity, that could cause disease problem. Maybe not a sustainable way to reduce greenhouse gas emission. A more effective way to reduce greenhouse emission is uh, diversify your crop in system. Use pulse crop. You see here is an example. Uh, we diversify the crop in system. We use pulse crop. We use one year, one uh, one crop, and two and three or four crops. You see the N2 emission reduced when you increase. Uh, uh, the diversity of crop in system by increasing the nitrogen use efficiency. So this is just uh, one aspect of uh, the benefits of crop rotation, uh, diversified rotation. As I mentioned earlier, we should use uh, multiple indicators to assess the crop in system. So here's an example. Uh, after 80 years study, the same study, and when you increase the diversification, what happened? You increase uh, here, you, you increase the yield, increase the nitrogen use efficiency. Well, this diversification from this red is a mono, and go to this uh, blue is a two crop, and go to the green and dark green three and four crops. You increase the diversity, you increase the yield, nitrogen use efficiency, water use efficiency, energy productivity, economic return, but you reduce environmental impact. So this show with multiple indicators clearly show the, the benefits of crop diversification. So let's back to this uh, resilient rotation and we developed 12 uh, fact sheets use different uh, system indicators and these are posted on the WGRF website. If you search resilient, ro resilient rotation, you will get these uh, uh, different uh, fact sheets and we are currently in the middle of uh, developing uh, soil health index and the sustainability index, and stay tuned for that results. With that, we come to my concluding, and we know that Caribbean system modify the ecosystem services and producers need to have a clear goal of uh, their, their crop rotation to optimize their, uh, the benefits of Caribbean system. Uh, we know diversified cropping system use policies to generally improve the system, per system performance, not just the yield and other cropping systems. So for producers, it's very important to uh, select the crop that adopt your local, local conditions to diversify your cropping system. We know crop diversification is not an easy task, but that could help producers to achieve the long-term goal of sustainability. Uh, with that, thank you for your attention. Yeah, for this project, uh, the indoor crop is in the soil health uh, treatment. The main target, uh, the main purpose including uh, the indoor crop is uh, try to use a pot crop to, include, to, to improve soil health. Uh, we do have two different types of crop, indoor crop in that four years. It's sort of rotate, yes. Yes, it's a challenge, as I mentioned, for diversifying your cropping system. 
and there may need additional machinery investment. Uh, like Francois just mentioned, the intercrop is an example that diversify your cropping system for sure, but the separation and then the pest management is a challenge. It needs more experience for producers to adopt this, this uh, crop diverse, diversified crop rotation.